Hey everybody, welcome back. And in this video, I wanted to talk about operators. Operators are something that's used in pretty much every programming language you are going to run into. And I'm specifically going to be talking with JavaScript, but most of these are going to carry over in any programming language. So if you just want to learn about operators, this video will probably be useful for you. All right, so I'm going to be explaining these, defining these, and we'll be, go we'll be going over specifically arithmetic operators. And then in the upcoming videos, I will talk about some of the other ones. So operators and operands. Those are two words you need to know. Like, for example, 5 plus 8, this plus sign, this is known as an operator. 5 and 8, they're known as the operands. Basically, the operator does something with the operands. And in this case, you guys probably know 5 plus 8 is 12. Haha, <laughs> just kidding, 13. <laughs> but anyways, the operator basically tells JavaScript, add 5 and 8 and return 13. So here's another one. Var x whoops, equals 5. All right, so this the equals sign right here this is known as the assignment operator this is a um, equal sign and in in programming this is different than this and this you will need to know the difference and we'll be getting into that as we go into future videos but this is known as the assignment operator this would not be like 5 plus 5 whoops ah, come on piece of crap 5 plus 5 is equal to 10. That's not how it works. This, because that would be trying to say 5 plus 5 is a, an identifier of this value 10. And we can't use 5 plus 5 as a variable, so that's not going to work. So this assignment operator is only used in this case. It's not used in a mathematical equation where it's equal to something like this. In that situation, we would use two equal signs, and we will be getting into that as we go. All right, so here's another example. This greater than sign, I think that, yeah, that's a greater than sign, is comparing five to four. If five is larger than four, it will return true. So is five larger than four? Yes, so it will return true. There are actually a lot of operators in JavaScript, and it is important to familiarize uh, yourself with the type of operators and how to use each one. So in this vid video, we're going to be specifically talking about arithmetic operators, or math, simple English terms, <laughs> addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. I recommend you understand all of these four. If you don't, you probably want to check out some basic math tutorials. Uh, you can find those online or just YouTube search. Yeah. Anyways, then we have some more advanced ones, such as the modulus, which is the remainder. And then we have increment, decrement, and a negation. And I'm go for example, let's look at the modulus. All right. So let's do some examples here. As you can see, I have a new file. I'm going to save it. Let's make it new.html, oh, lowercase here, new.html. I already have a file, I'm just going to overwrite it. And then we can make, obviously if we're working with a large JavaScript application, we will have other HTML within our page, and this would be either in the title, or the, not the title, the uh, head, or at the end of the body. But this case, I'm just going to write script so we can run some JavaScript in testing. So we could have a variable, x, and we can make that equal to 5. Now let's make it 13. And then we could say, actually, um, the way the, uh, the modulus works is it takes the remainder of a some, some values. So for example, we could have 13 um, modulus, where is it at, right, modulus, 2. And well, the way this works, so if I if I assign it here 13 modulus 2 well the remainder basically how many times does 2 go into 13 we get 2 4 6 8 10 12 
And then we can't go one more because then we'd have 14. So we're left with one extra the th from 12 to 13. So this is going to make the variable x have the value of 1. And then I can display it on our page, JavaScript alert, 1. So that works as planned. And we'll get into the other one soon. So here are some examples. 5 plus 5 returns 10. 5 minus 5 returns 0. 5 multiplied by 5 returns 25. 5 divided by 5 returns 1. 13 modulus 2, which I just showed you, uh, returns 1. Negative 5, that is going to return negative 5, obviously. <laughs> so yes, we can do that with, so we could be like var x equals negative negative 2 and that's going to change our values within our program so now it's equal to negative two. so there's also increment and de or decrement I don't even know how to pronounce that but basically how this works is it's going to take our variable and add one to it or subtract one from it so x plus plus returns 6 as well as plus plus x returns 6 minus minus returns 4 so as you can see there's four different possibilities here and basically the only thing we do is switch the order so we always have two plus signs or we always have two minus signs before or after the variable well when sometimes in our programs obviously this will be for a larger scale but I'm just trying to give you the basics we will do something with a variable such as use it within a uh, statement of some sort and we will need to increment it or decrement it so let me show you some examples with this we could have var x is equal to 10 alright so we alert it it's 10 simple alright but now we could say x plus plus refresh the page and now we have 11 make sure to save your file we could also go plus plus x and you alert x 12. So this is an operator. Basically, it says var x. And let me erase this up here. Actually, no. Okay, var x equals 10. And then we could say x is equal to x plus 1. Sorry, I'm typing so slow. My keyboard's pretty far away, and my microphone's in the way. So that's pretty much, we could just sum this up as x plus plus. It's just a short hand version of that pretty much and it returns the same value. Although you did notice there was two versions, plus plus x versus x plus plus. Well, this has to do with the use of x. So let's say variable y, let's go variable awesome, is equal to x. So basically awesome is going to have the same value as x. So we can alert awesome here, save it, refresh the page, whoops, did something wrong, oh, it's about awesome wrong, that's pretty lame. So now they are both equal, they both have value 10. Well, we can actually assign this to an incremented x, so we could say plus plus x. Now when we alert awesome, it's 11, as you can see over here. That's because we incremented it and then we assigned x back to the variable. But if we use the other version with the plus signs on the other side, now what we're doing is we are assigning it to the value of x and then we're incrementing x one up. So now awesome is equal to 10. But if we alert the other variable x, refresh the page here so we first we alerted awesome it's 10 we could say yeah awesome is 10 but alert X gives us 11 so you can see there's a difference here so alert awesome gives us 10 alert X gives us 11 why is this that's because awesome takes the value of X originally which is 10 and then X is incremented 1. So that means awesome has a value of 10 
and x now has a value of 11. You could also do this with x minus minus, for example, which just does the opposite direction. So awesome is the value 10, x is the value 9. This is often used for loops. If you want a loop to end after a certain amount of time, say 10 times, well then you could go x plus plus and each time through the loop we can add 1 to x and once x reaches 10 from let's say 0 or from 1, whatever, then it'll stop the loop. So that's just an example of what we can do with this. Alright, let's go back to our PowerPoint because I'm just rambling on now. So when multiple operators are used in a sequence, sometimes we run into problems. So for example this, what does it return? I don't know. It's a question mark. JavaScript and mathematics does not simply go left to right. It doesn't just add these and then subtract 3 and then multiply 2 and then divide 3. They follow operator precedence, which tells which operators to do first. So in JavaScript, this is first going to do the multiplication, so we get 3 times 2, which gives us 6. And then division, so 6 minus divided by 3 is going to give us 2. Then addition, 5 plus 5 is going to give us 10. 10 minus 8 will give us the final answer, 8. So, yes. Another thing to worry about is what is known as associativity. This is left to right or right to left. So addition and subtraction have the same operator precedence, which is which one to do first. So, for example, right here, 5 plus 5 minus 2. Which one goes first? Well, that has to do with the associativity. So if two or more operators have the same operator precedence, then we must look at the associativity of the operator. Addition and subtraction are left to right. So in this case, since addition and subtraction are left to right, that means they have equal precedence, so we're just going to go left to right. 5 plus 5 is 10. 10 minus 2 is 8. Let's look at another example here. 2 plus 2 minus 3. What does it return? Well, since it's left to right, first we just add, because it's left most, and then we just subtract 3. So 2 plus 2 gives us 4, minus 3 returns 1. Left to right or right to left would give us the same answer in this case, but this is all, not always the case. So for a great reference material, you can go to this website. Uh, hopefully I put the link in the description if I feel like it. And yes, so this website, it's uh, the Mozilla, Mozilla Developer Network, which has a lot of great JavaScript tutorials. Sorry, I'm just trying to make this easier to view. Oh shoot, gosh darn it. Piece of crap. So yes, here has a gr has, it has a great example of how these work as well as a table that gives us all the operators and you can see there's a whole lot of them and this will give us the precedence on the left basically which one goes first and then if there's two that have the same precedence such as multiplication and division both have a precedence five well then we go left to right which means whichever one is the farthest left goes first in the situation that we're in so back to the PowerPoint we can also force or clarify precedence. So to make things easier, it's often recommended to use parentheses, which if you don't know what those are, just that, to force precedence. So here we have 3 plus 3 times 4. This gives us the value 24 versus 3 plus 3 times 4, which returns 15. So as you can see right here, I forced this 3 plus 3 even though multiplication always goes first in this precedence but since I use parentheses that is going to keep this separate from this over here and it's going to add these and then it's going to multiply 4 so this will give us different values so it's very important to know what you're doing with the precedence and forcing the precedence so I'll, I'll be doing a lot of this as we go on in future videos but this is often useful to make code clear in large expressions such as this. As if anybody else is working with you in your program or your uh, website or your JavaScript 
whatever pro uh, project and someone sees this, well, they're not going to know exactly what's going on. They could figure it out, but there's high chance of mistake and it does it, it's confusing. But if you clarified such as, oh, well, obviously I want these ones separate and then I want to multiply that by 820. Whoops, <laughs> don't delete it. Yeah, but you get the point. You can force that way. So that's pretty much all I have to say in this video. And hopefully that helped clear things up and I will be getting into some more operators in future videos. So now that you know about operators, go give them a try and you if you want to just like to show what for like what the value is, just use an alert function, which we've done that multiple times, so you should know how to do that. Thank you for watching and subscribe.